Hi, I'm Bill Sagres, and I'm doing a, uh, a tutorial on the, the eyes feature of the uh, Portrait Pro plugin for Photoshop. So um, I've already opened the picture in Photoshop and I've made some preliminary uh, adjustments to the color and the tone, that sort of thing. And I launched the app. And so what you see on the screen is the, the interface right after it has asked me, uh, is this a, a woman, a man, or a child? So I've, I've identified it. The, the first thing we have to do in order to, um, to use the application, to use the plugin, is to make sure these control points are all in the best optimal places. Since we're, we're going to uh, focus on the eyes, I am going to adjust the eyebrows. And you can just zoom in using um, your mouse wheel and the option key. So if, if you have the cursor over the control point side, it zooms in, likewise here. But you, you can drag the, the face around if you have that there. And you cannot drag the picture around on the control point side. So try to get all the control points uh, as logically placed as makes sense. So we... I chose this picture because of the challenge of this strand of hair that's coming down and interfering with the, the eye. It, it's still, the work, the application will still work very well. Um, we just have to make sure that we get the control points in the right place so that um, it can do its thing. The next set of control points we want to look at, obviously since we're working on eyes, is the eye control points. So this little pin thing here needs to be in the center and then the green ring needs to go around the black part of the eye and then the orange ring needs to cover the the colored part of the eye so I'm gonna adjust this just a little bit and then you can you can resize the circles by just clicking on them and dragging and once you get the control point set, the the power of the software is is amazing. But but you will need to spend some time getting the control points in the right places, so that it is applying the right logarithms algorithms. So it's applying the right algorithms to the right parts of the eye. Right, so we have left eye, and we'll do the same for the right eye. All right, with the with all the control points picked, we are ready to begin working on the eyes. Now, this was the the first thing it does is it, it applies the default. Um, I'm turning off everything except eyes, since that's what we're talking about in this tutorial. We're just we're just gonna look at the. Uh, the features inside the I button. Once the control points are set, we're ready. We are ready to start working. There is a master fader that's going to apply to pretty much all of the controls in the in the in the setting, and then there are sub faders that will control various aspects of them. So eye whitening. This is going to control eye whitening as a general rule over both eyes, but you can fine-tune it left eye right eye um, and so on so you can you can change this on an eye by eye very detailed basis um, but once we get the control point set we can use the eye whitening to clean up uh, bloodshot eyes um, to bring some of that uh, white back into the eyes and then this is going to determine the amount of the eye that is whitened. So it goes from no nothing outside the iris, and then you can see that it expands as the slider goes out. Um, many, many times the, the default setting is going to be the better choice. Clean eyes is also uh, it, it is going to take out um, the veins and, and things that you might see in an eye. We can darken the pupil, and then we can also control the size of the darkening. And 
that is just another fader and that's going to that inner circle is going to darken it um, then the the size of that how far out do you want it to extend how much of the eye do you want to fade out so naturally you're going to want that to, to be about the size of the pupil if you're going to darken the pupil and we have sharpening of the eyes. This is one that that I um, I use this generally. Um, just give it a little sharpening, and you can see you can break it down to any or all aspects of either eye. Sharpening the eyebrow. Um, it does exactly what it says it's going to do. You have a left and a right option. Brightening the iris. Now, this is this is something that uh, is a lot of fun and also can become very artificial looking uh, if overdone. So you can add a little pop to the eyes, and um, that's one of the things that I really like about this application is the way that you can pop the eyes just a little bit. Um, many many times, this is about as far as I'm going to go when I'm doing a, a portrait edit. Um, however you can change the color of the eyes and this will give you the range of colors that you can add to uh, to the eyes so you can change the eyes so that's uh, very very effective and then the intensity of the color change is it's a little like saturation in a regular Photoshop edit how intense do you want that change to be so we have uh, so we've got the purple and all the different aspects of the eyes. So if you were trying to do something artistic, um, changing the color of the eye might be something that you would want to do. Contact lens also will do the same thing. Now I, I have occasionally used contact lens. What I generally am going to do is use the color of the model's eye and use that color lens and then the opacity of that lens changes the look rather dramatically. So if, if the color happens to be muted just a little bit, the opacity, you can set the contact lens opacity. Um, and, of course, you can change the color of the lens as another way uh, of changing the eyes. And sometimes I feel like the contact lens results in uh, a little more realistic look at the eyes. Um, her eyes were blue, so I'm going back to that. And I'm just going to give it just a little bit. The size of the contact lens. How much of the eye do you want covered by that contact? And uh, try to get it to look realistic is usually one of my objectives. Now, uh, we have eyelid. We can add eyelid. Now, eyelid is going to be a shadowy look uh, above the eye, like a, if there is no crease there. <clears throat> and it will it will um, enhance that look. Um, might be a way of, of smoothing out some unwanted lines on the eye. Remove pupil reflection. It does what it says, so it takes the catch lights out of the eye. Um, I like catch lights, and so I am more likely going to add a reflection. There, these are all the different types of reflections. This picture was shot outdoors, so I might try a sunset. There's a sunset in here, and it'll catch. It'll throw a sunset reflection in the eye. Um, I usually will use one medium dot and then I try to locate that dot on a catch light that is already there. So there's a, a catch light up here. So I'm going to move this catch light over to the just sort of to this edge right here. And you do that by nudging the reflection. So this is the and the left and right is not the model's left and right, but the left and right of the screen. So I'm going to move this guy over and I'm going to move it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to match that in the right eye. So 
So I'm gonna move it up and over. And this one I'm gonna have to think about a little high. I have found sometimes the numbers will correspond from eye to eye. So if you if you type in the 28, um, it will take it to where the 28. But if the, if there's you know some variance in the way the model is standing or, or leaning, uh, that may not necessarily always put it in exactly the right place. Um, I think this wants to come down just a little bit. And then how much of this eye? How dark do we want it to be? So that would be the opacity of the reflection. So there's a very bright reflection. And subtle to me is always better. I'm trying to get a natural look. So something in that range. The face button. So now we, we have uh, come to the end of the eyes. If you're a photographer like me, there's there's something in the eyes that just that just grabs the viewer. And going through this tutorial, going through this process on a, a picture by picture basis, um, I went through every single option. I generally I generally don't go through every single option because I, I know what they do and I don't have to play around with them. So I know what I'm trying to change. I jump in and make those changes. Um, it, it is a a great easy way to really really enhance and again for me it's it's all about being subtle um, I, I, I generally don't if, if my client is the model I don't want to produce something that the client doesn't recognize and then they'll be afraid to show it to their friends and their friends will say oh that doesn't even look like you so that's how you use the eye settings the the, the eye controls in Portrait Pro um, you can take a, a picture that it starts out as a, as a good picture but you can just put a little extra pop in the eyes and as a photographer I really like that I like to pop the eyes a little bit because I think they there's there's so much of our expression so much of our our physical personality is transmitted by our eyes and so I like to I like to get them to pop a little bit but I also try to do it in a in a subtle way so that the client doesn't see a picture and go who is that I don't even know who that person is uh, if, if the client is the model then naturally the model wants to, the, the, the final picture needs to look like the model. So be, be subtle with it. Subtle is, is going to be the way to go with, um, with this whole portrait pro application is, will do unbelievable things. And, and being subtle with it and getting, you know, nudging the, the look just a little bit uh, will, will, will be the way to, to create beautiful portraits that people are going to be really, really happy with. All right, that's all I got. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope this was helpful. Uh, grab this application. If you already have it, get in there, get a picture, uh, jump in and uh, play around with all the eye controls and see what they all do. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to the channel. I do a lot of uh, vlogs, inspirational videos, but I do occasionally do uh, some sort of a tutorial. So uh, hit the notifications. And thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.